How do you fit a new shotgun to your body? And does it really matter? Well, it mattered enough to help me win a shooting event the very first time I picked up a new shotgun. This is George back with the New Hunter's Guide, the YouTube channel and podcast, helping new hunters get started and bringing new insights to all hunters. And today, guys, I want to talk about how you fit a shotgun to your body. And I'm going to go in depth and how to actually check each and every aspect of shotgun fit. Guys, this is a really, really important topic. A lot of sporting clays people and just competition shooters, they get this more so than most hunters do for some reason. And I think because they're shooting a lot of shots, to them that seems more important, where hunters are maybe not shooting quite as much, so they seem to neglect this. But guys, I think this is more important to hunters than anybody else, because every time you pull the trigger on a shotgun, you are risking wounding or crippling game. And if you can improve your hit percentage by just a little bit, you are going to bring home more game. Now, I can only go in so much depth in this video, but I'll put a link down below to my blog where I did an article on this subject with much more detail. Now, let's jump into it. There are three main categories, three main areas of shotgun fit. Number one, you've got length of pull. Number two, you've got comb height. Some people refer to it as drop. And then number three, you have cast. And if you can get all of these components at least close for you and your shotgun, you will drastically improve your ability to hit. And the reason is this, a shotgun is not like a rifle. You don't have sights or a scope or crosshairs, at least not usually. What you have is your rear eye, which functions as the rear sight. And then you have the front bead on the shotgun. If those are in alignment, then you are on target. You're able to shoot what you're looking at. But if your rear eye is off just a little bit, any direction, up, down, left, right, or any combination, you're going to be off potentially by feet, which means you're going to miss more game. And some of the game you do hit, you're going to be crippling it. It's still going to get away to suffer and die somewhere else at another time. So we want to stop that from happening. We want to make sure that we are able to align that perfectly every time with our shotgun, every time we mount the shotgun. And the most important thing about shotgun fit is consistency. You want to be able to lift that shotgun and shoulder it the exact same way every single time, look down that barrel the same way every single time. So here I have a Browning Auto 5 Sweet 16. All the shotguns I'm going to show you today, the chambers are open, there's nothing in them. And so you want to lift that and be able to mount it the exact same way every time. You want it to come to your shoulder, you want to be able to look down the barrel, you want to be able to put your eye in line with that front sight at the same height, the same back and forth, every single time the same way. And the way that you do that is by adjusting your shotgun or your shooting stance for each one of these three areas. Now, number one, length of pull. There are several different ways people try to measure length of pull. One of the big ones is they say, okay, take your shotgun, take your elbow, put the shotgun in the crease of your elbow, put your arm around, and if your finger rests in the middle of the trigger, then your length of pull is perfect. It's exactly where it's supposed to be. The problem is that doesn't really work pretty much most of the time because you will adjust your arm and your fit and how you're holding it in order to put your finger there. This shotgun seems to fit just about perfectly using that method. However, if you use the right method to check length of pull, you'll see that this shotgun is not so good. And what you want to do to check length of pull is you want to shoulder the shotgun and then you want to check the distance between the rear knuckle on, of your thumb on your shooting hand and your nose. And you ideally want that knuckle to be about one and a half to two and a half finger widths from your nose. So let me show you right here on this shotgun. If I go ahead and I shoulder and I put my finger on the trigger and bring it in, I'm not one, two, three, four, somewhere around four or four and a half finger widths from my nose. So this shotgun has too long of a length of pull and I would need to adjust that in order for it to fit me better. Now the reason that length of pull matters is that when you take a shot, first of all, you don't want that shotgun to come back and hit you in the face. And if your length of pull's not long enough, you can get hit right in the face by that receiver. But if your length of pull is too far, then you can have the wrong angle to look down the rib of that shotgun. So if I take this one up here, just like this, and I get right there, 
I can actually do fairly well with this shotgun because of the way that this particular stock is shaped. Usually though, you have more drop. So your cheek is sliding down and further away and then your cheek is getting lower. On this particular shotgun, I can do okay with that length of pull, but it's not ideal for me. Now let me show you another shotgun. I've got a Mossberg 930 Waterfowl. We could do the elbow test, wrap around, looks perfect. But when we do the actual test in our shoulder, you can see one, two, three, about three and a half finger widths from my nose. So this shotgun, not perfect, still a little bit too long. This is actually a shotgun I used for years before I even knew about length of pull. And if we do the test right here, I can actually do fairly well with this shotgun. I can get my eye right about where I need it to be. Again, the shape of this stock works well for me in terms of length of pull and the comb height. So I can do okay with it but it's not perfect. Now I shot this shotgun for years, hunting everything, every sporting clays event that I went to, this was my number one shotgun. But here I have my newest shotgun. This is a Mossberg 940 Pro Waterfowl, the new model. Of course we could do the elbow test and it also comes in as perfect. But when I do the actual length of pull test on this shotgun, you could see right there, one, two, and we are right there. We are two to two and a quarter finger widths from exactly where it needs to be. And this one, as you can see, comes up just perfectly. Now I got this shotgun, picked it up from the gun shop, cleaned it, took it apart, put it back together, and then went to a sporting clay shoot, having never fired it before ever, and I won the day at the sporting clay shoot without having ever shot this gun before. Is it because I was such a great shooter? No, and I was not the best shooter there. I just happened to have a good day, but this shotgun was actually a better fit for my body than the one that I'd been using for years. And as soon as I picked it up and used it, it just fit me better. My eye was on target better. I was able to see better and I was able to break more sporting clays. But how do you adjust that? Well, there's a few ways you can adjust length of pull. If you've got an older shotgun or a wooden stock, you can either cut some of the stock off or you can glue pieces or shims of wood on, or you could add a cover over the butt plate, maybe a recoil pad, something like that. And that will enable you to adjust your length of pull. Length of pull operates from a four to one ratio. So for every one inch you add or remove from the stock, you are gonna be adjusting your length of pull by four inches. So people often make adjustments in quarter inch or eighth inch increments. So if you add a quarter inch to this stock or you remove a quarter inch, that's gonna change your, your length of pull with your eye by about one inch, eighth of an inch will give you a half inch adjustment. So you don't need to do a lot to a stock to adjust the length of pull. Now this shotgun and lots of modern shotguns come with shims or spacers or different things that you can adjust length of pull easier. So right here, there's a little piece of plastic that runs right in front of the squishy recoil pad. And then they give you a set of different shims or different pieces of plastic. Some are a little bit longer, some are a little bit smaller, and then you can adjust that length of pull to be exactly what you need it to be within a certain range. So that is really all you need to do. You need to get your eye on that and use something like a shim or if you have an old shotgun and you need to cut that stock or add to it, you definitely want to go to a gunsmith or someone that is an expert shotgun fitter, have them measure you, measure the shotgun, measure twice, cut once, right? You don't want to mess that up and you want to leave yourself a little bit of margin. All right, the next component is comb height or drop. And that is how high this part of the stock is, where it hits your face, where you get your cheek weld. So if I mount it like this, I've got my cheek weld right about here. And the way you can tell if this is on or off is how high your face is on the shotgun. So if I bring it up like this, I'm looking down the shotgun and I can see the rib of the barrel. I'll try to put it up like this for you guys. I can see straight along the rib of the barrel, but I'm not looking down on the rib and I'm not under the rib looking up. I can just see the rib of the shotgun 
with my peripheral vision. And that is right about where you want it. You don't want to be so high that you're looking down on it because that means that your field of vision is going through and under the front sight and you're going to actually be shooting high and you don't want the opposite to happen. If you're too low, then you're looking up like this and you're aiming higher than where the shotgun is pointing and you're actually going to shoot low. And so you want your eye to have the perfect up and down position, and that is what comb height does. Now, some shotguns, they have a adjustable, removable piece right here, and you can add or remove material from this. You can clip on a new one. Older shotguns, you could sand this down, or you could add you know, a strip or multiple strips of leather on top of, the, of this right here in order to get you some extra elevation. New shotguns like this one, they actually come with shims and spacers that you can take this stock apart, put them in, and they will actually angle the stock slightly up and down in order to adjust that comb height. And you can get that to be exactly where you want it to be. But the acid test is you want to be able to mount the shotgun just like that, and you want to be able to see the entire rib of the barrel all the way down, but just barely. You want to be able to see it without straining, but you don't want to be looking down on it. And if you can't see it because you're too low, then you need to adjust that up a little bit. And if you can do that, and then your eye goes straight along the comb, straight through the front sight, and both are in line, your elevation is going to be perfect. The fit in your shoulder is going to be good because you've got a good length of pull, and you're going to have consistent mounting and elevation with every shot. Now guys, before we move on to the third area and an acid test that you can do to make 100% sure that your fit is perfect without spending any money, I need to invite you to go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Nobody is sponsoring this video, but if you click that like button, you can help it reach more people and support the channel. And you might as well just go ahead and click subscribe as well. Now the third and final element of fit, and really there are more than these three. These are just the big three, the ones that you can get 80% of the benefit fit with 20% of the knowledge from is cast. Now I don't know where that term came from, but cast is the angle of the butt end of the stock this way or this way. It is the left and right because when you mount a shotgun, your body is at an angle. And so the shotgun needs to have a little bit of angle. This needs to bend slightly in order for you to have a perfectly straight alignment from your eyeball. That cast is making up for your body's natural bend and curvature. And it's just a slight bend. Now shotguns are gonna come either neutral with no cast, they're gonna come with what we call cast off, which is the gun actually angled slightly away from your body, which is exactly what a right-handed shooter wants, or they're gonna come with cast on, which means the shotgun is gonna angle slightly towards the body of a right-handed shooter. Cast is always measured by right-handed shooters and how it affects a right-handed shooter because I guess there are no left-handed shooters. But in either event, if you're right-handed, you want it to kick away from you ever so slightly. If you're left-handed, you want it to kick away from you ever so slightly. It's just going to be to the other side because that's the way that you're holding the shotgun. So you can tell the cast of your shotgun by looking down the barrel, through the trigger guard, from the sight in order to see if it bends away from you ever so slightly. I know it's really hard to see on the camera, but if you're sitting there on a table and you put your shotgun down, maybe get a ruler to help you, you'll be able to see that this particular shotgun right here has just ever so slight of a bend in the direction that you want it to be. This is perfectly done as cast off, just ever so slight, and it fits me well. Now, again, modern shotguns, they're gonna come with shims. They're gonna come with little things. You could take this apart and you can add some different shims and spacers, which will actually cause this, actually let you angle the stock ever so slightly in either direction. So you could turn this into a left-hander shotgun, or you could add a little more cast to it, or you could put it back to neutral cast, which depending on your body type and your shooting style, maybe neutral cast is good for you. But as long as the cast is not opposite your shooting hand, you're going to be okay. 
This being cast off, whether it's a little or a lot, is going to be okay most of the time for a right-handed shooter. The only problem is if it's cast the other way, if it's cast on. If it's set up for a left-handed shooter, it's going to cause a righty some problems. You're going to want to correct that. Now, you can use shim kits and things on new guns. This gun, like I said, it comes with everything. All the different shims and spacers that you need to adjust height, comb height, that you need to adjust length of pull or cast. Now, with old shotguns, wood stocks, that didn't have any adjustments, what you would actually do is you would heat this stock up with steam and then you would put it in a vise and apply just a little bit of pressure to it in order to bend that stock over time and the direction that you wanted it to go. So cast does matter. As long as though it's close, it'll be good enough for you. One of the issues, guys, with all fit is that the game changes for hunters. You hunt in the early season with a shirt as thin as this one, and your shotgun might fit perfectly. Once you get to the late season and you've got a parka on, you've got extra material here, so it's actually pushing the shotgun out further away from your body. You might have a balaclava on your face, so now whenever you go to put your cheek onto the shotgun, you've got more material there, so that's affecting your comb height. And so it's a little bit of a moving target. So perfect fit is not really necessary for the hunter, but a close fit is usually going to be good enough because the environment's going to change, your clothing's going to change, all those factors are going to change, and at the end of the day, it's just going to be close anyway. So like I said, if you put in 20% of the effort, you can get 80% of the benefit. Now for the acid test to see if your shotgun fits you and if your adjustments did the job. All right, so all you guys need is a drinking straw. Regular plastic bendy neck or any kind of thin drinking straw is going to work. I got a hundred of them downstairs, didn't cost me a thing. And then you just need some tape. Some masking tape will work real good. Two-sided sticky tape. Pretty much anything will do the job. And what you're going to do is you're going to tape that straw to the top of your receiver. And you want to tape it in line right down the rib so that it's perfectly centered and aligned. And if your shotgun is perfectly fitting your body, when you go ahead and mount the shotgun just like this, you will be able to see straight down the barrel, straight through that straw, and straight through the front sight. So I'll try to set up like this just to give you a sense of it. So you're gonna be able to see right through that if your eye is perfectly aligned. Now if my eye is off to this side, I'm not gonna be able to see it. If it's off to this side, I'm not gonna be able to see it. If I'm too high, I won't see through. If I'm too low, I'm not going to be able to see through. But if I set it up just right, then boom. I can see perfectly through this straw, straight down the barrel, through my front sight, and that lets me know that my shotgun fits me well. Could it fit me better? Maybe a little bit. Is it absolutely perfect? Well, it might not be precision enough a tool to be able to tell that, but it'll get you close enough for most hunting situations with very little effort, and pretty much anybody can do this. You can test it, and then you can take your shotgun to a gunsmith if you don't feel comfortable making the adjustments or you don't have the tools and things to do, and work with them until you get sufficient fit, you are able to hit what you're aiming at. The last thing you guys need to do is check out that article down below to learn more about fit. Click on this video right here about do semi-automatic shotguns reduce recoil, and check out this video right here about why do they plate shotgun pellets with copper. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Till next time, God bless you, and go get them in the woods.